So Bill Johnson and Chris Vallotton in their book, The Supernatural Ways of Royalty, Chapter 8, writes this. We have made cross-carrying a career opportunity instead of a one-day event. This derives from a serious misunderstanding of what happened to us when we were saved. When Jesus told us to take up our cross and follow him, he wasn't talking about spending our whole life with a cross on our back any more than he did. We are meant to take up the cross and follow Jesus to the baptismal tank where we identify with him in his death. Then he says, he's quoting 1 John 4 here, he says this, the Apostle John said, as he is, speaking of Jesus, so also are we in this world. Notice he didn't say, as he was, but instead he said, as he is. Jesus is not the suffering servant carrying his cross anymore. He is the coming king. We are to be the revelation of his royalty on the earth. Paul emphasized this to the Corinthian church. You are already filled. You have already become rich. You have become kings without us. And indeed, I wish that you had become kings so that we also might reign with you, 1 Corinthians 4, 8, close quote. Now, what is wrong with Johnson's use of those two passages, 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and 1 John 4, verse 17? Well, when, when Valentin and Johnson say that uh, t uh, taking up our cross is not an everyday thing, that flies directly in the face of what Jesus himself said in Luke 9, verse 23. And he was saying to them, if anyone wishes to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. So who are you going to believe, Bill Johnson and Chris Vallotton or Jesus? I'm going with Jesus. Taking up the cross is something we should do daily. It means that we are to daily be in a posture of submission to him, obedience to him, ready to suffer for the sake of Christ suffer for the glory of God. We are to be in that posture every single day. We are to be denying ourselves, putting to death the deeds of the body, per Romans 8, 13, mortifying the flesh, going to war with sin. All of these things are things that we do every single day. It's part of our progressive sanctification, denying ourselves, that is taking up the cross. So that just flies directly in the face of the clear teaching of Christ himself. I mean directly contradicting his own words. So what and, then What then did Paul mean when he said, you're already filled, you've become rich, you've become kings without us. I wish that you had become kings so that we might reign with you. Yeah, talking about missing the forest for the trees, I mean, they completely miss the sarcasm in what Paul is saying. And there's many places in Scripture where Paul uses sarcasm, and this is one of the classic examples. So I want to read this in the way in which Paul would have wanted it read in the way in which the original recipients would have understood it with the use of my voice inflection. So Paul says, Now these things, brethren, I have figuratively applied to myself and Apollos for your sakes, so that in us you might learn not to exceed what is written, so that no one of you will become arrogant in behalf of one against the other. For who regards you as superior? And what do you have that you did not receive? And if you did receive it, why do you boast as if you had not received it? Paul's using sarcasm here. He is, he is rebuking the Corinthians, and, and ironically, he's rebuking them for many of the same abuses that we see in the modern charismatic movement. And, and Paul continues with the sarcasm. He says, you are already filled. You have already become rich. You have become kings without us. Indeed, I wish that you had already become kings so that we might also reign with you. Dripping with sarcasm, Paul was rebuking the Corinthians for their arrogance, they had become very arrogant in their exercise of the spiritual gifts as to, and it had almost become a contest between them as to who could prove themselves to be the most spiritual. Well, I, I'm more spiritual than you are because I speak in tongues more than you do. I, I have the gift of healing more strongly than you do. They were boasting in their supposed spiritual abilities, and Paul is giving them a blistering rebuke, a rebuke that is absolutely dripping with sarcasm. This is not a good thing here. And Chris Valentin and Bill Johnson completely missed that and therefore missed the meaning. And Paul continues, he says, For I think God has exhibited us apostles last of all as men condemned to death, because we have become a spectacle to the world, both to angels and to men. We are fools for Christ's sake, but you, no, you're prudent in Christ. We are weak, but you, you're strong. You are distinguished, but we are without honor. To this present hour, we are both hungry, thirsty, poorly clothed, roughly treated, and are homeless. Does that sound like 
prosperity to you? Does that sound like living your best life now? No. Uh, we are homeless, we toil, working with our own hands. When we are reviled, we bless. When we are persecuted, we endure. When we are slandered, we try to conciliate. We have become as the scum of the world, the dregs of all things, even until now. The way in which Chris Vallotton and Bill Johnson use this passage is completely contrary to its actual meaning in Scripture. And here again, we see them taking words and phrases, even entire verses out of, in Scripture, divorced from their context, and using what was intended as a sarcastic rebuke as a description of how things really ought to be. Right. Complete opposite of what Paul intended. Complete opposite of, of what Paul intended, and so ironic that Paul was rebuking the Corinthians for doing the very same things, teaching the very same things that Chris Vallotton and Bill Johnson teach today. In his book, Bill Johnson says, we are supposed to enter the death chamber of baptism with a cross and exit with a crown. The crown is the likeness of his resurrection. So it is an over-realized eschatology that he has there that we get in this life, the exaltation, the signs, the glory, all of the good, the prosperity, the crown. We can have the crown in this life. And whatever guilt we feel, whatever suffering or affliction we endure is only meant to last as long as it takes to get into the baptismal tank. But which, once we come up, we get resurrection power, we get resurrection exaltation, just like Jesus did. Exactly. And it is exactly that. It is an over-realized eschatology. They believe that all of the benefits, all of the rewards that we will one day experience in heaven is supposed to be fully realized here. Basically, Chris and Bill teach that following Christ is to follow him in his exaltation, but never to follow him in his humiliation.